In version 7.2 and later of IHS Piper, the application will automatically determine within a twinned line or flow loop which link should be defined as a loop link. Now, what do we mean by a loop link? You'll notice that in the gathering system currently showing on screen, we have a well on one side, two sets of lines, north and south, that connect to a delivery point off in the east. What we have is a flow loop, and one of the links has an unusual appearance. It's thick and goldenrod in color. By default, within the application, any link designated as a loop link will have this thick goldenrod appearance. So what exactly is a loop link? When you have a location where flow can go more than one direction. In this case, it can go up the north side of this link or down the south side of this flow path here. We have to determine how much of the total rate is going to go on each side of this flow split. The software uses a loop link to designate a location. You can think of it as a bookmark where flow can go more than one way. And it's going to determine just how much flow is going to go each way based on all of the pressure losses running along the entire flow loop. In this gathering system, all of the lines are three inches in diameter. And we have a single well delivering a rate of 10 million per day. Now, each side of this flow loop, or these two lines, are twinned. That is to say, they are exactly the same size, exactly the same length, exactly the same elevation changes. So we should expect any hydrostatic and frictional pressure losses calculated on either side of this flow loop to be the same. If we wanted to verify that, we could go to Pipelines and Gathering System. And if we had a quick look and compared the link going from the delivery to node 1 or from the delivery to node 8, we would expect them to have the same settings. And indeed, from the delivery to node 1, we have a length of 1,040 feet, diameter of 3 inches. And from node 8 to the delivery, again, 3 inches, 1,040 feet. So the entire system is twinned on both the north and south side. Based upon that information, how much rate out of the total 10 million a day we have would we expect to go along the north side of the flow loop or along the south side of the flow loop? Since all things are equal on each side, we would probably anticipate that half the rate is going to go on each side of this flow loop. So let's go ahead and run a present forecast and see what the result is. And in fact, if we have a look we'll see that at the loop link on the north side of the flow loop, the rate is 5 million a day. And indeed on the south side, it's also 5 million a day. What might we expect to have happen if we were to change the diameter of one of these lines? Let's go ahead and test that. I'm going to use the lasso select tool and simply pick all of the links for the entire north flow path. Now that they're selected, we can right click, edit selected diameters, and let's double them in size. We'll go to six inches. So now we have the same gathering system. Our well is still delivering 10 million a day, and there's still a split in the flow path here. We have a flow loop, but on one side of the loop, all of the lines are six inches, and on the other side, they're all three inches. What might we expect to have happen now? If we consider the frictional pressure loss, a larger diameter pipe should have significantly lower frictional pressure loss along it. If there's less pressure loss, we might anticipate that more rate would go down that side of the flow loop. Let's go ahead and run a present forecast and see what the result is. If we check our annotations now, we can see that indeed on the north side of this flow loop, where we have a larger 
pipeline diameter, we have a much higher rate. Out of the 10 million per day from the well, 8.601 is going through the north side of the flow loop, and 1.399 million a day is going through the south side of the flow loop. Let's come back and revisit the location of this loop link. What I'd like to do is make each side of our flow loop identical again. So I'm going to use the Lasso Select tool again. Let's select this entire north side of the flow loop and change it back to a diameter of 3 inches. Now I had mentioned that a loop link can be thought of as a bookmark that allows the software to determine that flow can go in more than one direction within a flow loop, within a flow path, and that it needs to determine how much rate is going to go on each side of that potential splitting location. So flow can go this way or this way. How does it decide where this link is? The application is going to place the loop link as far away from the delivery point as possible. This location certainly agrees with that. It's going to look for longer link lengths, as well as links that have smaller diameters. It is also going to try to select links that have as little elevation change as possible. With the automatic algorithm turned on, this is the location that's been selected. However, when a model becomes more complicated or you have a lot of loop links, a lot of flow paths possible within your model, it may be necessary to manually adjust their location. In order to do so, we have to change the default within the software. If we go to Properties and Defaults, under Default Loop Link Selection Method, we can put it to user selects loop link and click OK. This dialog is indicating that you have an option to allow the application to look for every possible flow loop within the gathering system and identify how many loop links you need to designate. However, since we allowed the application to automatically detect all of the loop links beforehand, this is an unnecessary step in this case. And we're going to say no. What happens if we move the loop link from this location down to this location? It's still far away from the delivery point. There's a relatively long link, has a small diameter, and has no elevation change. If we go to Pipelines and Gathering System, we're going to move the loop link from Node Well to Node 4 to be from Node 5 to 6. You'll notice that Node 4 to the Well is currently designated as the looped link. We're going to uncheck that and I like to leave breadcrumbs so I can remember why I've made changes. So we're going to say moved loop link. If you had a particular reason for doing so, you could enter it here. Then we're going to locate link 5 to 6, which is this one here. Make it the looped link under this column called looped. And again, I'm going to leave myself a note. Moved from link for dash well, so I know where it used to be, and say OK. Notice that that link now has the thick goldenrod appearance. It has been designated as the loop link. What might we expect to have happen if we forecast this gathering system? Do we still expect exactly half the rate to flow along the north side of the flow loop, and half to go down the south side of the loop, or might we expect something different? Let's go ahead and run a present forecast. And we'll notice that exactly half, 5 million a day, went on the north side of the flow loop, 
and exactly half, another 5 million a day, went on the south side of the flow loop. So in fact, the location of this loop link, either here or over here, had no effect whatsoever on how much rate is going to travel on each side of the flow loop. So just a quick recap, loop links can be thought of as a bookmark in your model, if you will, to identify locations where flow can go in more than one direction, typically a twinned line or a flow loop. The algorithm by default will automatically select a location for all of the required loop links within your model. Ideally, loop links will be as far away from the delivery point as possible, as long as possible, and have the smallest diameter possible. All three of those things result in the largest frictional pressure loss possible, making it easier to determine how much rate is going to go on each side of the flow loop. Additionally, it will also look for locations that have the smallest elevation change possible. Two more notes when considering moving flow loop links. The first is, it's best if they are placed in locations where there's going to be flow. Saying that another way, Placing a loop link in a location where the flow rate is very close to zero will result in slower convergence for your model. And lastly, you do not want to attach loop links to any facilities. So what do we mean by that? We do not want to attach them directly to a delivery point or to a compressor or any other facility type. Let's quickly review one more time how we might think about locations to move loop links to. So what should we be thinking about? Remember, you do not want a designated loop link to be directly attached to any facility. So only attach it to another node, not to a compressor or a delivery point. We want our designated loop link to be as far away from the delivery point as possible. We would also like to pick longer links as opposed to shorter ones when moving a loop link. Try to select locations where you have a smaller pipeline diameter when you're moving a loop link. And finally, look for areas where you have minimal elevation change when you're relocating a loop link. Let's return to the original version of this gathering system where we have three inch lines and a flow loop running both to the north and the south with half the rate going through the north side of the flow loop and half going through the south side of the flow loop. The question remains as to why we might consider moving a designated loop link at all. In the example, we moved it from this location down to this location from node five to six Note that in its original location from the well to node 4, which was automatically selected by Piper, if we check the status window down at the bottom here, it indicates that nine iterations were required to reach a solution when we ran the model. What happens if we move that loop link back to our alternate location? I'm going to right click, pick that link and go to edit. We're going to make that the loop link, disable the preceding one, and say OK. Let's update the forecast. You might have noticed it took a little longer to run. The easier way to see that is to check the number of iterations that were required. It actually took 44 iterations to converge on an answer in this case. We still got the same rate on each side of the flow loop. The pressures calculated are still identical, however, it took more calculation iterations to converge upon an answer. So this really answers the question of why move a link at all. The software will automatically locate it for you. Remember that it's going to first look for a place as far away from the delivery point as possible. It's going to look for longer links and links with smaller diameter. It's also going to look for links that have minimal elevation change. Occasionally, you may want to move a link in order to help the model solve more quickly. If it can solve with fewer iterations, you'll have less computing time. And of course, this is compounded as your gathering system becomes more and more complicated as you add more facilities and more flow loops. So it is worthwhile keeping in mind that sometimes moving a loop link can help your model.
In this example, we've demonstrated the requirement for a loop link whenever there is a flow loop within your model. There is another occasion under which you need to have a designated loop link within your gathering system. And that is on the occasion when you have multiple delivery points, which will be the topic of the next video.